Um, so, um, Anna, would you like to talk about um, today, 1st of February, and the significance of uh, what that day means? Yeah. Is this my segment or this is just like a, a pre-segment? Whatever you want. Okay, because the thing I want to do is kind of different. Yeah. Um, so uh, just about today. Okay, I, I can talk about today. So today is in bulk and um, which is associated with Bridget. Uh, and it's the midpoint between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. And um, so it's the time when things begin to start waking up under the ground. Okay, so the, the um, even though we might not see it on the surface, things are starting to wake up. And um, I'm not an expert on Celtic mythology, so I'm, I'm you know, but from what I understand, Bridget is associated with seeds and grains and with um, milk products, especially ewe's milk or, or um, uh, sheep's milk. And uh, which was interesting because yesterday I, well, I suddenly felt that I had to buy some sheep's milk yogurt. <laughs> I saw it in the store. I was like, oh, I need to buy that. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting. And rosemary, I know is associated with her. Rosemary and cinnamon. Uh, and the colors, I forget the colors. I think uh, pastels, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And it's just a time to honor bringing in the light, you know, bringing back the light. Yeah, candle mess. It's the same as candle mess. That's interesting. I, I was reading that she is also a triple goddess, that there yes. were two yes. other bridges. Yes. Uh, from Tom. Hi, good to see you. Um, yeah, so two other bridges, um, and that she is also been, you know, the subject of a lot of different arguments. Um, yeah, you know, in terms of uh, who and what she is, but that she's also connected with new beginnings. Yeah. So that seems perfect. Um, so we're just approaching the half hour mark and um, welcome Tom that's joined us. Um, how, are you? You? how are you doing? Well, actually, I'm doing surprisingly well. Good. You know, I've got a, I've got a few insurance issues to work out, life and death insurance issues, but that's not the topic of the meeting. Um, life and death may be the topic of the meeting, but the insurance issues, <laughs> unfortunately, I have to deal with on my own. So anyhow, um, my name is Tom DeCaro. I live in Silver Spring, which is just outside of Washington, D.C., the belly of the great Satan, as the Muslims would call the place. Um, and uh, I, my background uh, from a spiritual point of view is started out as a Catholic uh, kind of I guess, morphed into evangelicalism. Then I discovered the Dharma of the Buddha in 1994. Uh, and now my primary practice area since then has been Buddhism. And um, I practice in the Tibetan tradition and the Sakya order. There are four orders of Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, the the uh, <clears throat> Galupa is the Dalai Lama's order. And I'm in the Sakya order. And there's sort of equal equal dignity in, internally but the dalai lama is sort of first among equals but uh, at any rate the sakya order is kind of a uh, uh um i guess a scholarly order not not so much as the uh, galupa the galupa is like um, extremely concentrated on uh, uh scriptures even secondary and, and uh, scriptures and, and things like that so anyhow what i have uh come here today, a topic that I was near and dear to my heart is the, uh, is the nature of the mind. I think the nature of the mind is absolutely fundamental because whatever we're doing, thinking, running around, seeing things, tasting things, um, thinking things, we are essentially, we're in our minds. We're, we're coming from a point of view of our minds. So what is this mind? And um, 
I look at it perhaps a little bit less dogmatically than some people. I say we're looking for, uh, I guess, two factors. One is what can you what can you prove or what can you say about the nature of the mind that has that has correlations that are commonly understood as being proof that what you're saying is true or accurate. And then there's faith, uh, or, um, you know, it is said in the highest levels of the uh, Tibetan Buddhist um, scriptures that the nature of the mind is, is a transcendent entity. It is the nature of the mind is pure, pristine awareness uh, coupled with presence. Uh, and so the combination of those two is, is the ultimate uh, uh, what you are. Uh, where you emanate from, where the th- what is obscured by and producing your thoughts and so forth and so on. So that is um, that re- unless you are a very advanced meditator in the Dzogchen, D Z O G C H E N, or Maha Mudra, M A H A M U D R A traditions, you're going to um, take that on faith, uh, if you will. Uh, and I have, but I'm not here to to proselytize uh, about the nature of the mind. I'm here to talk about how, the approaches that you can take. So what I do is I uh, let's take a start with Western philosophy, which most of us are familiar with. And you go back to Socrates. Socrates was uh, condemned to death for uh, corrupting the Athenian youth. And his corruption, of course, consisted of of uh, eliciting from them uh, logical conclusions that were drawn from their own uh, reasoning abilities. But be that as it may, Socrates is, is uh, sitting there with his cup of hemlock and he comes up with two possibilities. Possibility number one, after death, the mind then it takes over, the mind's obscurations that are caused by association with the physical body are are gone or eliminated in one fashion or another and the mind continues on inf- infinitely um, and in a state of uh, of some kind of bliss uh, depending on your your uh, what you take into that uh, what you take away from your your lifetime either you can say that that's one possibility Socrates posited and that's what a lot of people think the near-death experience people and so forth the other thing socrates said was if that isn't the case well then death is just like a great big long dreamless sleep and and your your stream of thought comes to an end your mind has no essential nature and and so it's one of the two and so i think we have to look at the possibility that it may be one of the two if we are being honest with ourselves as to what uh, what would be the nature of the mind. So then we, we fast forward to Descartes. He had his famous, uh, I think, therefore I am. And what he did was he reduced his uh, uh, philosophical method was to reduce every proposition uh, to uh, what could, could not be refuted. In other words, if you put forth a proposition uh, like, for example, the, the, the sky is blue. Well, you could refute that by saying, well, it's red at sunset and things like that. So, so uh, he would um, take statements about reality and things like that and, and reduce them. And he came to reduce everything down, reduce it down, reduce it down. And he came to, I think, therefore I am. And I expressed that, of course, I think that I think, therefore I think that I am. Because I'm not exactly sure that that uh, what we think about and what we believe that we are all the time is what really is in the sense of, of uh, something that, that exists or something that is irreducible. But uh, Descartes gets to, I think, therefore I am. So let's take a look then at the th- something that we can't argue with. Everybody thinks. Everybody thinks. And so you have thinking and you have a series of thoughts and one thought in a sense leads to another even if the even if the grip is kind of tenuous 
you may be thinking about how pleasant your last vacation was and all of a sudden you realize that you haven't paid your bills this month and you fly into a panic. Uh, there's no connection, ostensible connection between those two thoughts, but there is something in your, in your psychosomatic makeup that is, that creates anxiety around the fact that you haven't paid your bills and it, it becomes a thought pattern. So if we have this series of thoughts, it's like a waterfall or cascade. It's been described as the so-called monkey mind because it's like a bunch of monkeys and trees swinging from branch to branch aimlessly. Uh, uh, that's the way your thoughts supposedly are, untamed and um, unruly. And then from that observation comes the notion that your thoughts basically control your, the way you feel, the way you act. Because if you, if you, um, if you see something that you like, you, you, you have a natural tendency to want it or to go towards it. See something you dislike, you want to get away from it. And so, so your thinking mind is constantly bouncing around from likes to dislikes to neutral items. And eventually it just, it, it, it uh, just keeps on going and going and going. It never exhausts itself. Eventually the causes and conditions arise for the demise of your physical body and and that's the end of that. Your your uh, stream of thoughts that started in in the in the womb, perhaps, and will, will end. Well, you have a final thought, and then and then death. What comes after death? You know, we leave that to the uh, to the metaphysicians. So so let's we know we have a stream of thoughts. We know we have these thoughts, and so let's take a look. Let's take a look at these thoughts and say, where does the thought come from? Where do the thoughts come from? And in order to do this, there's a practice that is uh, many, many, especially Eastern, um, call it religions or Eastern practice uh, have um, come up with, which is to carefully watch your thoughts arise, persist, and pass away. So you think, you think, boy, I wish I had a fancy car, you know. And that thought, that thought just sort of, that thought, it arises. And you sort of visualize the fancy car. You think about the fancy car. Think about how nice it would be to have a fancy car. And then, and then as you um, are continuing to think, you move on to another thought. But there's your one thought, the, the fancy car thought, let's call it. But where did that come from? Where did that come from? You ask yourself. And, and if you look as I, my, my experience with, with this practice is looking into the mind that thinks about um, fancy cars, uh, it doesn't really come from anywhere. It, it is a, uh, just a construct that doesn't have anything else behind it. There's nothing that, uh, set, that supports it other than your, uh, your, your, I guess, your physical body, energy body, spiritual body makeup that is, uh, that is uh, controlled by your ego or controlled by uh, your, I think ego is a pretty good word for it. Uh, and that ego generates a cascade of thoughts. And so really the thought the thought itself has no essence. It has no, no solid reality. You can't say, well, this thought, I'm going to take this thought and put it in my thought jar because it's a good thought and I think I should ought to preserve it. No, it's just going to, it's going to pass away. It's going to rise out of basically nowhere. You know, it, it may be manicured or worked on by your, your, uh, your energy pattern and then it's going to persist and it will occupy your attention for a period of time, and then it will slowly drift away, and another thought will emerge to take its place, and then keep on going and going like that. So we get to the point where we say these thoughts, they don't have any uh, objective correlative. They don't have anything behind them other than the fact that they continuously arise. Uh, so if that is the case, then you think, or, or when you when you do this practice long enough, and you start to see your thoughts arise, finally you you become grounded, if you will, through the practice in the 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 
thinker or the 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 construct from which the thoughts rise, your, 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 your thinking mind, whatever you want to call that. But you realize that you can observe your thinking mind. You can observe it. You can know if you if you really, really concentrate and you and you uh, uh, it's what best done in a meditative state. If you get yourself into a meditative state of intense concentration, then you can separate the thinker from the thought and you can observe that separation and you can observe those two those two entities and then you realize that the thinker itself also doesn't have any particular essence it doesn't have anything to which it correlates it's just there it it has um it has arisen and it and it uh, is driving your life all of your perceptions every, all of your perceptions you eat something that's good and that was good you have, you're having fun at a carnival. All Everything that you see here, whatever comes through your sense doors, is basically another thought. It's another thought. And it is a thought that is supported by the notion that there is something out there. There is a, an object out there that is uh, capable of... of doing something, capable of, of making you feel a certain way, capable of making you see a certain thing. But once again, when you get to the very center of all that, what you have is, is a, an awareness that this whole process is going on. It's just a, basically an awareness that the whole process is going on. And then you realize that you have limited control over this process because if you're going through your day, the alarm goes off, you smack it, you jump out of bed, get in the, you know, you go through your whole day because you, most of the things that you do, you feel compelled to do because you have to earn a living or for some other reason, or even to alleviate boredom. If you're, if you're wealthy enough that you don't have to work, you have to, you have to occupy your time when you're awake somehow. So in other words, you are essentially driven like a, like a herd of sheep through, through your life by this process of, of making these thoughts or, or making yourself believe or understand that what you are thinking is, is real and that you have to react to it. And you have to react to it in a certain way. For example, pretty girls. Why do you think a female form is pretty? Because society has decided that, okay, a thin woman with certain uh, physical characteristics is considered pretty, and, and a pretty girl is attractive, and they should attract you and, and cause you to react the way one would react to an attractive person. But if you go over to Africa, a pretty girl is someone with big, big lips with a plate in their lips and a, and a, and a bunch of metal rings extending their neck. I mean, someone that you wouldn't even consider you would say, my goodness, the whole thing is what I'm trying to get at is that is no different than any other perception that you may have. You may like it, you may not like it, whether you like it, whether you don't like it has nothing to do with the thing that you're looking at. It has everything to do with, with conditioning that arises, as they say, from your previous uh, experiences. So if you have a pre, so if you believe that you have previous lifetimes, you can understand that you have accumulated uh, experiences that have come to the forefront of your um, of your, I guess, behavior uh, in this lifetime, and and that you act on those uh, those tendencies. And the same could have if you don't believe in reincarnation, you can understand that. Uh, your early childhood, you know, you get into the Sigmund Freud idea uh, that, or the Carl Jung idea that your, that your early childhood uh, has um, played on the, a notion of, of archetypes that exist in every human mind because that's the way, uh, that's the nature of it is, what it is to be a human being. Um, but if you look at it that way, you cannot get around the fact that that in itself does not get around the fact that everything is just an arising 
sensation or thought or perception in your mind and that whatever there is is layered on top so to speak of your of your awareness and if it's layered on top of your awareness then it is then then your awareness is uh limited by the fact that you have something that is influencing it right now and so for example if you're in pain you you pay attention to the pain the pain is conditioning your awareness and your awareness is not aware of it of everything or aware of anything that it could be aware of it's conditioned to be focused on the pain or focused on some other something else and and you're not and it doesn't it isn't aware that it's aware of being focused on the pain or anything else like that at least at the at the level of of conscious functionality of a human being you know going through life so just to let, just to let you know that you have seven minutes left okay well i was getting ready to wrap it up pretty much so anyhow um the point of this whole observation is if you go with the first observation of socrates that there is a uh, that there is a continuity of awareness that is not limited in time or space by by a physical body then um you can decide as i've decided you may want to decide that it's a good idea or it is beneficial to yourself and to everyone else with whom you're in contact to clean up the distractions and the the uh perceptions and the the wants and the dislikes and everything else that that takes a big that grabs that awareness by the nose ring and pulls it around you want to get rid of all that or or at least become aware of it and be have given yourself an alternative by virtue of the fact that you understand how it works you give yourself an alternative to reacting to it in in the way that you normally react to it and that is not to say that you're going to go around like like some people do they say well i'm just going to go crazy you know you have you have people like uh uh, you know, the Andy Warhol crowd in New York in the, in the 60s and 70s, you know, and they just went crazy. They said, you know, well, we're not going to um, we're not going to pay any attention to to uh, what we uh, uh, what we're being conditioned to how we're being conditioned to react to our our perceptions. We're going to go off in a different direction. We're going to to make a big aesthetic hash of the whole thing and 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 try to. Uh, try to find meaning that way. And unfortunately, all they're doing is rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic because they're still obscured their awareness and they're just playing around with these obscurations and they are not trying to clean up the awareness. And so my practice consists of, and I'm not gonna go into detail about what it is, but uh, it consists of bringing the the naked awareness to the primary position from which i act instead of bringing the what they call it adventitious or or happen chance perceptions uh to control my my actions and then we get to the end of the end of the discussion here what is the nature of the mind well, from this that I've been able to discern after decades of study and practice and meditation, the nature of the wine is that pure awareness. And it doesn't have color, shape, dimensions, limitations, anything of that sort. And I am not a great yogi, and so I don't have that awareness, uh, unlimited awareness at my disposal, so to speak. But... It seems to me that even from a logical point of view, if you think that there is something beyond death, then that awareness is the nature of the mind that is beyond death that persists. And so I'm going to conclude with a 
with a cone that I've been working on, a cone, K-L-A-N. It is a, what they call a public case, a cone on uh, from China, but it was transposed to Japan. Um, and I've been working on this cone for 20 years. And you work on a cone by letting it work on your consciousness and free up your mind from um, delusive thoughts and things like that. And the cone is this. So the student goes up to Sao Su and says, what is the one word that expresses non-obstruction? And the master says, thus. And the student says, but that is an obstruction. And the master says, yes, it is. So I leave you with that. And uh, I don't know if there is, is a question and answer period or you want me to say anything else, but that's what I have to say right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. That was really thought provoking, um, which I, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, <laughs> I'm always good. I, ha I, ha I have some, some, some observations um, rather than questions, but before I you know, say what I want to say, I, I want to open it to the group. And uh, does anybody have any thoughts or things that they want to say or ask? Bonnie? I do. Yeah, Tom, um, and this is a, a huge question, but as you were speaking, I kept wondering, is Tom talking about our consciousness as you're talking about the thoughts that come into our mind? You know, they're random. They're something that we may have inherited. But are, are these thoughts our consciousness? Well, it depends on how you define consciousness. But for purposes of this discussion, I was defining the stream of thoughts as consciousness. Because as long as you're having a stream of thoughts, you say, hey, I'm conscious. If you're asleep or knocked out or, or uh, under the influence of drugs and you're, and you're uh, oblivious, you say, well, I'm, I, was un I was unconscious at the time. Or if you're in an right, alcoholic right. blackout, gotcha. you say, I'm unconscious. But now you say, I'm conscious. And the consciousness is, consciousness is this big stream of thoughts, you know, which is a great big fat nothing. You know, sort of like cotton candy. <laughs> it gets about as much nourishment as... God, you see what I mean? That, in my view, that, that's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. But, but now, can't, I'm not... can't you be aware of your thoughts? So therefore your consciousness is separate from the thoughts? Well, the word oh, consciousness is a word. So you can define it any way you want. So I define I define being aware of the process as awareness or or the, the facility of 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 understand of of perceiving the process as it unfolds as awareness, that's a, that's the word I use for that because consciousness has too much is too much baggage word consciousness. So I, I that's why I leave it there. What's a better word? Awareness awareness is the underlying um, condition of a sentient being of a being that that has a consciousness because you can't be conscious if you're not aware. And, and you can't be aware if you're not conscious. That's what that cone, that's one of the meanings of that cone that I gave you. In other words, you, you understand what, well, you may not understand that. Uh, that that's, a, that's a pretty deep no, I do. In, insight. So, yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to share my thoughts, if I may. Um, Wish you would. Uh, the the phrase "all is mind" um, came to mind on on what you were talking about and how um, Louise Hay, who you know, I I, um, I know Louise. I don't know her personally, but yes, I know. yeah, I I trained in her work, and she she says something very profound in in her books and her recordings, where she says it's just a thought. And a thought can be changed, you know, so whatever attitude that we have about a, a situation, you know, we have the power to, to change that thought and that belief system. And I was thinking about um, Greta and um, how Greta and I, Greta's the lady in the top, in the blue, uh, there, there she is waving, uh, how we met in a... I'm only seeing you and me, so... Say that again? 
I'm only seeing you and I on this Zoom call. I don't have any other, I didn't even see anybody else. Oh, I see. You can change that view in the I saw Bonnie. Uh, I saw Bonnie a minute ago. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, Abraham is uh, a collective group of consciousnesses or consciousness. Um, and we met in a Facebook group um, to do with Abraham and law of attraction. And I was thinking about the nature of Abraham and how it relates to what you're talking about in terms of thought. And <clears throat> the nature of Abraham is lots of different consciousness merging in the non-physical. Um, you know, and maybe some of them were alive at one time and some of them perhaps are from a different dimension. I don't know. Uh, it made me think of that and also about perception and how we color it in, you know, it, with the attitude or the emotion and the, the, the thought, the feeling. Well, Abraham, Abraham, as I understand it, and I'm familiar with the, the being or whatever you want to call it, called, yeah. known as Abraham. Abraham, as I understand it, is, is a teacher, is a preceptor, as they call him, someone who is trying to raise the collective vibration. And, and if you are, for example, jealous all the time, or if you're, if you're greedy, or if you have, if you're always fearful, that's a low vibrational state. And if Abraham can, by his, by the things that he points out, uh, uh, cause you to raise your vibration, then, or, or, or cause you to become more identified or in tune with the pure awareness state, as opposed to being jerked around by the, the thought state, then, then he's done his job, and he can he can punch his ticket and go home and have a beer, you know. But but I mean, and I and I do respect a lot of the stuff that, that I've read from him, from his uh, thing. But you see, if you're looking at at the whole the whole boogie, okay, there's there is without going into the early Buddhist uh, uh, sayings, I mean, the, the the Buddha himself said there is no object, there is no, there is no seer. There's no no one seeing the object, and there is no object. There is only seeing. That's what the Buddha said. That was his cone. That's pretty interesting. Wow. To his followers, and of course, for every other perception. And then you get to the the uh, Chandra Kirti, which means lamp of the moon in uh, Sanskrit. I believe me, I'm deep into this stuff. I don't want to. I don't want to lay all this stuff on a bunch of people that are just trying to get to the bottom line. But Chandra Kirti came up with this thing. Well, he actually he compiled um, mind only, the, what the so-called mind only or yoga kara school. And the mind only school says that everything is your mind. Your mind is it. Your mind is everything. In other words, the desk that you're leaning on is your mind. And and um, that is where a lot of people. That is very very. If a lot of people who touch that that set of teachings, no matter who is propounding it, uh, they 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 get in touch with the fact that that's a very profound observation. But I'm coming from the point of view of the Madhyamika Prasangika Prasangaka, um, which means the syllogistic observational. Uh, uh, what they do is they say that nothing has inherent existence that you can perceive. Nothing has inherent existence, including awareness. Awareness does not have inherent existence. Why? Because it is in a dialectical relationship with things that don't have inherent existence. And so therefore, um, although there, there may be, you know, at full enlightenment, uh, a, a ab abrogation of the, uh, of the notion of inherent existence or non-inherent existence or temporary uh, adventitious arisings of thoughts and things like that. At this at this stage of the game, uh, we don't we don't get there. We can only say there is no. So, uh, but I'm not going. But that is a very very complicated. I, I understand it. I can simplify it in terms of like that we're emerging, we're emerging <clears throat> from the non physical into the physical. You know, well, and we're not emerging. We're emerging. Is, is I don't even call it an emergence because what you end up with is we're not here, you know, really, we're not here. Yeah, what we true. are is we are aware of, we are aware and our awareness is, is conditioned. And because of the conditioning of our awareness, we say, oh, I'm sitting here in a human body that has, you know, all these characteristics, right? Mm -hmm. And we, I'm seeing all this wonderful yeah. stuff and I'm, 
um, attracted and repelled by things and and I'm hungry, thirsty, horny, you know, so you, but, uh, but really what, what you are is where, and, and, and if you use Cartesian logic, if you want, whether you, whether you believe in it or not, but I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice if you read reductio, uh, down to pure awareness. And that is the Madhyamika Prasangika, um, view and that's the highest view that i've seen after, after reading all this stuff you unbelievable amounts of this stuff uh and thinking and meditating and and uh, walking around and talking to people and and being instructed actually by the sakya trees and is the highest uh the head of the sakya order and, and uh, i mean I've, I've done a lot of heavy duty practice and i this is what this is sort of what i came to and is it right you know can i can I hand you a little box that has that has all this in it? No, I can't do it. Nobody can do that. And so the way around the fact that you can't do it is to say it's a dialectical process. And of course, that's a wonderful Marx rhetorical uh, escape hatch whenever you're trying to make an argument. I'm, I'm aware of time, and um, we've, we've gone over the half hour mark, and we still have uh, three segments to fit in. I do have a couple more things that I wanted to say, so if I could just take one minute and then I'll, I'll, quite hand, o- I'll, I'll hand over to Greta in, in maybe two minutes, if that's okay with you, Greta. Um, <clears throat> I, I just wanted to say that I once had a vision of Thoth and it was revealed to me in that vision um, that his name just simply meant thought and that, you know, he was the kind of overseer. Um, it, it made me also think about the biology of belief that some of, some of Greta's work uh, is based on uh, the Bruce Lipton work. And of course, our, you know, our, our belief system has a great impact in terms of thought. Um, and my, I just wanted to share briefly my experience of the Ganesh mantra, which I've used a lot in my life, and how it has the ability to open up um, closed roads. So when I've been stuck in traffic, I've, I've, I've used mantras, um, you know, whether they be Sanskrit or Tibetan, I'm not sure. Uh, some, of, some of them are definitely Sanskrit. However, the power of sound over mind or matter is amazing and works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to share that observation. That, that well, you see, so, you see, so-called objective reality is not objective reality. It's a stream of of a whole bunch of different things. And if you can influence that stream, then you can do magic tricks. Wow, that's awesome. Tom, really thought-provoking. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and you're welcome to stay with us for the rest of the group. Um, I may not stay for the whole thing because I've got some medical stuff I have to do. Okay. I'll stay for we'll, I'll get into the next segment here and see where we go. Oh, and I want to thank you for your attention, everyone. And uh, Bo Jen knows how to get a hold of me. I'm on Facebook, all kind of stuff like that. Thank you so much for your profound thoughts. Appreciate your sharing. Um, welcome to Jan that's joined us. I'm now going to um, hand over to Greta for her segment. Thank you, Alexis. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tom. That was um, that was really interesting. Thank you for coming here and sharing that with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> so we have some new um, we have some new people here today. So I thought I would explain what I'm going to do before I do it. I usually have um, about twenty minutes energy group energy healing segment um, on sacred segments. And what I do is I use the energy healing modality called emotion code to help find and release trapped negative emotional energies. And I'll just explain a bit about what it is and how it works. So emotion code is a modality created by Dr. Bradley Nelson, who's a chiropractor. And the reason why he came up with this modality is his, he had a flawless business model, meaning his patients would come to him 
with something being out of balance. So imbalances, that's what chiropractors do. You come to them with an imbalance, they help correct it, and then you go back. And uh, it always helps, but then the imbalance tends to come back. So Dr. Nelson thought, well, this is a great business model. My clients keep coming back and I keep correcting and they are happy and they keep coming back. But if I'm correcting these imbalances, there must be something else that's causing the imbalances to come back. So that got him really curious and um, led him to discovering what is now the emotion code. So it's a very straightforward way of finding, tapping into the subconscious mind and finding and releasing trapped negative emotions. So what are those? Well, throughout life, uh, when we feel an emotion, if it's not being properly processed and released, um, Jan, if you could mute yourself, that would be great. Because uh, I'm hearing, it's okay. Happens to all of us. Thank you so much. So, if when we experience an emotion and we don't allow ourselves to feel it and properly process it, it can get trapped. The energy of the emotion gets trapped in the body. Um, and then it stays. And it's like this little ball of negative energy um, trapped somewhere in the body. And the problem with it is that it has this vibration so it's attracting more reasons to feel that emotion and also because of how our and i think someone else mentioned it today how our um cells or how we go towards positive we go towards what we want i think that was tom uh on a cellular level we do the same if you put um if you put cells in a petri dish and you put nutrients on one side and you put toxins on the other side the cells are going to go towards the nutrients so they go towards positive. And it's the same in your body. If you have a trapped negative emotion here, your cells are, wanna, are going to want to go away from it. So let's say I do, and my cells kind of uh, want to go away from that. Then that can cause an imbalance in my body. And if I go to my chiropractor, he might be able to, you know, fix it temporarily. I go home but my cells are being pulled away. And that means my tissues on a bigger level. So then if you release that trapped negative emotion, your cells can ease back to their natural state of well-being. Um, so having these trapped negative emotional energies can cause physical discomfort, and it can also uh, block you from achieving your goals, wants and needs in life. Um, so that's the background behind why we do emotion code and how it works is I'll connect to the persons or the groups, um, subconscious minds so in a minute, I'm going to ask all of you to give me permission to connect. And then, uh, we will decide on a subject or for our highest and best good. And because I'm working on communication these days, I suggest, uh, blocking anything that is. Um, releasing anything that is blocking um, amazing communication in all relationships. Um, so that's going to be my suggestion for uh, our subject today. And if you have any other input, then put it in the chat um, and let's see what we can do. Um, so the way I do it is uh, I have this list of negative emotions and it's in two columns. And then there are six rows and five emotions in each row. And this is like a map to the subconscious mind. So what I'll do is I'll set the intention. What is, what is it that we want to improve or work on? And then I'll ask, is there a trapped emotion we can release to help with this? And I'll get a yes or a no. And if I guess it, get a yes, I ask, is this emotion in column A? If I get a no, I'll ask, is it in column B? And then I'll check to see what row it is in and which emotion it is. So that's how we kind of narrow down on what emotion. Then what happens is when I name the emotion, um, the energy of the emotion comes to the surface. And usually um, 
thought, a memory, a person, something related to when you felt this emotion and it got trapped can come to your mind. Sometimes nothing comes to mind. That's fine. Sometimes it's super clear. Oh, this is when my dad did this. This is when, you know, and if nothing comes to mind, that's fine. It only means that you don't need to know what it is. If something comes to mind, trust that it's the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, when I do it one-on-one, -on -one, if nothing comes to mind, I'll ask, do we need to know any information? And if I get a yes, then I can muscle test any yes and no question. So I can find what age did this happen? Um, you know, what is it related to family school, whatever. Any, any yes and no questions um, I can use to figure out what it is. And usually when we start, if I say age 26, then the person usually, oh, oh, that's right. I got divorced or whatever. So uh, when we have enough information about the emotion, um, we get permission to release. And the way we do it is um, based on um, the Chinese acupuncture meridians. So all the meridians are connected to the main meridian and that negative trapped emotion touches one of your meridians or more. So we use the fact that the meridians are connected to swipe along the main meridian. And when I do it um, online, I start between the eyebrows and I swipe toward the back of the neck three times with the intention of releasing that trapped negative emotional energy. If I'm in person, I usually start here from the neck and swipe down uh, along the spine but this works perfectly well and I use a magnet to magnify my intention but you don't have to you can use your hand your hand is powerful enough so when we do this you can swipe with me or you can sit back relax take a deep breath whatever feels good to you but to many people it feels nice to participate in the release so before I begin do you have any questions And it seems clear, Alexis. Um, I was. I just wanted to tie in um, what you said to what Tom said, and um, you know, I was having trouble earlier on, um, you know, believing that doing this and thinking that it was going to clear was mm. actually going to work. You know, and uh, I, I've experienced, you know, other people that have attended things in the past, like, oh, that's not going to work. You know. Um, but I think adding, you know, the way that you explained it just now, yeah. gives it so much more power and strength in terms of understanding. Mm. And, you know, just on the top of what Tom said, it made me think of um, belief and actually believing it as well will yeah. also give it power. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just thank you for taking that time to explain it. Because even though we've been doing it for months now, it yeah. just adds a little bit more validity and power to hear yeah. the explanation. So yeah, thank yeah. you. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. And since you did, I'm going to mention another um, interesting piece of information that might be helpful as well. Uh, I read the book, The what was it? It's Canvas Pert. Is it something like the biology of emotion or something? And it's it's nice because I'm a biologist. So I'm very skeptical to all of this woo-woo stuff that I'm doing, right? <laughs> so whenever I read something that um, explains the science behind what I'm doing, um, my heart is really happy, which is also why when I discovered Bruce Lipton, I was like, yes, someone is explaining um, the spiritual things that appeal to me in my language of biology. So Candace Pert, she describes how when, when we experience an emotion or when we experience something that triggers an emotion in our bodies, what happens is molecules are released somewhere in the body, they're put out into the bloodstream, and then they attach to receptors on cells somewhere else in the body. And what happens if the emotions aren't processes they're stuck these molecules are stuck at these receptors and if you think about it um if you take 
to quantum physics where everything is energy. These molecules are energy. That actually explains that the, the energy is stuck in your body in the form of these molecules. Which when when um when I read that, I got another explanation that made sense to me. So I thought you might appreciate that, Alexis. And she she won um I think she won a Nobel Prize for her work. So I trust this woman. <laughs> so okay. My intention now is to release anything that is preventing all of us from having clear, calm, loving communication with ourselves, with everyone else in our lives, in all forms, through words, actions, thoughts, um, emails, you name it. So it's a big intention of uh, really strengthening our communication. Is everyone happy with that? Or does anyone want to add anything? You can put things in the chat or speak up if you want to. Alexis is happy. Okay, so now I'm going to ask, is there, if anyone would like me to not include you in the group healing, then uh, let me know now, you can raise a hand or something. But if you're happy, you can smile and... <laughs> nice, beautiful smiles. So then I'm going to go ahead and connect to the energy of the group. My name is the group, my name is Greta. Cool, so um, can we release an emotion? to help all of us have clear, calm, loving communication in all aspects and parts of our lives. Yes, we can. Is it in column A? No, B, yes. And the first emotion to come up is unworthy. Unworthy. So I'm just gonna give you a bit of time to acknowledge whatever comes up for you whatever happened that created this emotion or whatever thoughts, memories, persons come up, just acknowledge that. And we can release this trapped emotion of unworthy. If you want to swipe with me three times, you can. Was it released? Yes, beautiful. More, yes. Pride. Pride can be, you know, being overly proud or it can be having your pride hurt. Can we release? Yes. So let's release this trapped emotion of pride. Good. So released. Yes, from everyone, yes. More, yes. Jealousy. Bonnie's clearing, it's beautiful. Jealousy, can we release this trapped emotion of jealousy from all of us? Yes, let's do that. Three swipes to release this trapped emotion of jealousy. Was it released? Yes. And when you swipe, you can kind of swipe above your head if you don't want to mess up your hair. Or you can give yourself a little cuddle if that feels better. <laughs> Either way works. So just know that um, both are available to you. You can swipe one hand, next hand, or you can do both hands, you know, whatever you feel like you want to do. You can play with it too. It's important to have some fun as well. Okay, was that released? Yes, is there more? Yes. Anger. Just acknowledge what comes up for you. Let's release. Three swipes to release this trapped emotion of anger. Was it released? Yes. I can do more. I just wanted to check in with you, Alexis. How are we doing on time? Well, I think that as long as everyone's okay, we can go over because um, we still have Anna's and Bonnie's segments to cover. Yeah, I 
don't want to go over too much today. So maybe okay, maybe four. maybe four more minutes if that works. Okay. okay. I can do that. All right. Cool. You want to release some more emotions? <laughs> okay. Great. So what else can we release? More anger. And when an emotion comes up more than once, it's not because we didn't release the previous one. It's because you probably felt angry more than once in your life. And you probably stuffed it down more than once. So we released one instance and now we're finding another one. And we can release three swipes to release this trapped emotion of anger. Beautiful. Released, yes, good. More, yes. Hatred. We're not judging the emotions, we're just acknowledging them. Let's release this trapped emotion of hatred. Get released, yes. More, yes. Confusion. Acknowledging what comes up for you, confusion. Now let's release three swipes to release this trapped emotion of confusion from all of us. Is it released from all of us? Yes. This is a compound, so it's more than one emotion and um, they were felt simultaneously. And when it's more than one, they kind of create this it's like when you mix paint, so it creates this, um, its own vibration. Um, and this one is failure and helplessness. All tangled up in one ball of negative energy. Failure and helplessness. So let's release that. Three swipes to release this failure and helplessness energy. Beautiful. Release, yes. More anger. Yeah. Release this trapped emotion of anger. Anger is often judged, so it's no wonder that we stuff it down and that we don't express it properly. Release, yes. And stubbornness. Stubbornness. I can see how that can relate to not having clear, calm, and loving communication. <laughs> At least for me. So let's release that. Stubbornness. Released, yes. Okay, what's the last emotion we can release that's going to be for everyone's highest and best good? For calm, clear, and loving communication. Terror. Terror, feeling terrorized or terror. Ter ter terrifying. Yeah. So let's release that trapped emotion of terror. Was that released? Yes. Cool. Are we complete? Yes. Okay. There is more information on my website, coachgreta.com. I'll put that in the chat because it has like the Greta with a T-H-E, which is a weird Norwegian spelling, but that's how my name is. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, reach out to me. And um, thank you so much for participating and bringing your energy to the group. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, beautiful. Okay. So um, do you have a preference, ladies? Um, who goes first, Bonnie, Anna? Um, I'm going to do a, like a short little ritual. So okay. is that OK uh, for you to go uh, last? Uh, yeah, that is that would, all right? Yeah, that would be better. OK, cool. So that you but could what? leave us. It yeah, would be better so that you leave us with a calm, you know? Yeah. I was yeah. gonna do like yeah. a little, yeah. That's so right. Anna, you're up next. <clears throat> Wait. No, what? I'm up next. I'm up next. Anna will go last. 
Oh, so I she see. can leave us with peace. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. 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 I have to step away for a moment, uh, but I'll leave you on muted. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Okay. So quickly, I'm talking about blood pressure herbs. How many here have problems with their blood pressure? Anybody? Yeah. Y'all don't. Oh, okay. All right. So. <clears throat> Real briefly, your systolic is the measurement. That's your top number of your blood pressure. That is the top number of your heart at work. That's the pressure inside the valve when the heart goes beep, beep, beep. Okay. And your diastolic is the measurement of the heart pressure at rest. And that's no sound. That's the lub dub. That's the no sound in between the lub dub. So, that is the measurement of our heart. And so when we talk about herbs, I'm gonna give you a really brief little herbal tea here. And I'll put it on the I'll put it on the website, okay? So hawthorn berry is good for inflammation and asthma. Fennel is for digestion and antispasmatic heartburn reducer. Hibiscus flower lowers blood pressure and lowers fat. Lavender flower is known to uh, aid in relaxation. Um, chamomile flower is known to relax the body and tissue and uh, around the gums of the tissue, to, to be honest with you, and also menstrual cramps. And if you know anything about heart attacks, sometimes heart attacks affect the gums of your teeth. Okay, so ginger root is excellent for the GI tract. Cinnamon bark is an antiviral and an antibacterial and antifungal. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, carob is like the uh, fiber that replaces chocolate. And then cardamom is an antidepressant. And if you take all those things and add it into a tea nightly, we should be sleeping pretty well. If you want to add two more things, there's something called the trans resveratro, which is red grapes, blueberries, peanuts, and dark chocolate. You can add that into your tea, and you can add turmeric root, which I like the turmeric root. And that is the short version that I'll leave you with. Sorry. Wow. Anna, you're up. Awesome. That's a lot. Do you have a, do you have a piece that you've been working on? that you want to share? No, I have not. I have not. I've just wanted to listen today and I'll try to put one together after listening today. Okay. If you don't mind. Awesome. Um, so um, when uh, Bonnie said website, uh, there's a Facebook page uh, just called Sacred yeah. Segments. Um, if anybody's on Facebook that's uh, here, uh, please go to that um, and, mm. and find all of us. I think pretty much. Um, and Carla, I hope to hear about you and your work um, in the future and hopefully at the end. Um, and Jan, um, hopefully we can hear from you as well if you would like to speak. But for now, over to Anna. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, so quick question, can you hear this heater? Is it noisy? Because I've got a little heater on and I'm Worried that people, it's distracting. It's okay. All right, good. Zoom Doesn't cuts matter. it out. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So yeah, just I wanted to um, to share an experience with you guys today because it's been um, really um, about almost twenty years that I've been uh, doing something for in bulk, which is today tonight into tomorrow. I was introduced to Imbolc by my late Reiki master, uh, Yvette Klinkenberg, and um, I'd never heard of it before. And she, this was back in New York, she was doing a ritual for it. And it really resonated with me. I mean, I'm not Celtic, I have no Celtic blood, but there's just something about Imbolc to me that feels very special and very sacred. And so every year I do something to honor it. And it, it always involves for me using fire because it is also candle mass, right? In the, in the Christian church. So I have a, um, a small candle and I, um, 
I like anointing my candles when I use them for some sort of a ritual. So I anointed this with some pine oil. And so I'm going to um, light the candle and then I'm gonna lead us in a short meditation, okay? If everyone is in agreement, yeah? All right, great. So, hmm. So if you like, if you have a candle nearby, you know, feel free to light one as well. Um, so I want to dedicate this candle to Bridget, to the triple goddess. Welcoming in the return of the light. welcoming in the light, welcoming in all of our hopes and dreams for this coming year. And I'm gonna light this. And I invite you to gently close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and release. Exhale through the mouth. Another deep breath in and just release all the stuff we've been carrying around with us all day and night. And one more deep breath. Releasing, bringing our awareness into our heart centers and our breath returning to normal. Taking a moment to focus on the breath. Noticing what you notice how your body feels in the chair. Any smells in the room. The air on your face. How your breath feels in your body. Just take a moment and notice. And now visualize a door in front of you. However, it looks is fine. It doesn't matter what it looks like. And we're gonna open the door, stepping into a winter meadow or field. It's a winter landscape. The trees are bare. There's frost or snow on the ground. The animals are all huddled away in their nests or dens. And it's cold, but you find a spot under a tree. And you sit and you're comfortable. And you bring your awareness down through your root chakra, down, 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 down into mother earth, deep within the layers of the earth. Burrowing through the earth, through the frozen top layer and burrowing down where all the seeds are lying in wait. The seeds that you've been planting 
over the past days, weeks, months, years maybe. The seeds that have been waiting to sprout and to grow. These are your, your wishes, your intentions for what you are birthing this spring. A new business, new relationships, better communication, projects, new home, whatever you've been wanting to manifest and create through your wishes and dreams. These are seeds that have been lying in the earth. And the golden sun is shining down upon the earth, penetrating through the layers of the earth, all the way down, 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 penetrating into the heart of each seed that you've planted, penetrating you and your essence. And these seeds slowly begin to open under the earth and a little tiny sprout comes out through the top of the seed and it's beginning to push its way up sprouts and it continues to grow as it's nourished by the sun. And it grows and grows. Your intentions grow and grow. Your seeds grow and grow, pushing up through the earth, emerging into the dazzling light of spring. And as they emerge, you see this meadow, this field has been completely transformed into a glorious springtime meadow field of flowers of all kinds, all different colors, kaleidoscope of colors. The trees are all sprouting leaves, that beautiful fresh green. The animals have come out of hibernation and are excited and jumping around and the birds are singing. And you sit under this tree watching the seeds that you've planted growing out of the ground, reaching up to the sun. How high they grow is up to you. These are yours, your dreams growing out of the, out of the earth, reaching for the sun being nourished, allowing the sun to pour down upon them, the light to nourish them. And you sit and admire the hard work that you've done and enjoying the fruits of your labor. Knowing that all is in perfect and divine order. And then it's time to go back through the door knowing that you can return to this garden, this field anytime you like to maybe water, water your plants, watch them, watching them grow. Returning back into your body back into the room, feeling your body on the chair. Maybe I feel like putting our hands on our hearts, thanking Bridget, thanking the sun, thanking the light, thanking the goddess, thanking Mother Earth for everything she gives us. 
supplying all of our needs with an infinite supply from her infinite love. Bless it in bulk to you. That was beautiful, Anna. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Okay. Um, before we, we come to a close, and at the end, <clears throat> I would like to um, hear from you, Carl, if that's okay. Um, but I just want to go around the group um, and ask you to share very quickly four things. And it's your intention, a power statement, a gratitude and a compliment to one of the people or to all of the people here. Like just what, just one compliment. So like I will start an intention. Uh, don't worry, I'll guide you through it. You don't have to remember. Um, so my intention is to feel at peace within my body. My power statement is I now feel at peace within my body. I'm so grateful. This is my gratitude. I'm grateful for this evening and the sacredness that I felt because I was very fearful at the beginning of this session. Things weren't working out, but I'm grateful for the sacredness that I experienced in this session through all of you. And the compliment, Bonnie, your um, herbal messages were so on point, particularly for me. And I've, I've been drinking this beautiful rose tea uh, with hibiscus. So it just seems perfect for me. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, just everyone, your contribution tonight, whether you spoke or not, uh, has been beautiful. I've loved your presence, each and each one of you. Thank you so much. So um, that's that's me, um, Greta. Um, <clears throat> please share your intention. My intention is to every day have even more clear, even more calm, and even more loving communication in all my interactions and in everything I do. Beautiful. And a power statement. A power statement. I, I speak my mind. I speak my truth. And a gratitude. I'm grateful to Tom for coming to the group, for sharing his wisdom and for being so well-spoken. It was an absolute joy listening to how you're flowing and how you're wording yourself and you're so on point. And so um, I love people who have a way with words and you do. So thank you, Tom. Beautiful, thank you. Even though you've already done it, a compliment. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that was it. That was it. I, there was many there. Thank you so Two much. for one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thanks, Greta. Okay. Um, let's go to Tom. Intention. Well, my intention is to, is to, I'm just going to use the vernacular, raise my vibration, not for my own sake, not for my own enjoyment, but that I may be of service to all beings who need, who have any sorts of needs. That's beautiful. Uh, power statement. For the sake of all beings, I will practice to purify myself and to grow in every way. Wow, beautiful, thank you. Uh, gratitude. I thank all beings, beings in the lowest depths of hell I thank the demons. I thank the, the starving spirits who attempt to torture people. I thank the gods in the god realms like Hercules and all those, Zeus and all those people. I thank every human being, every animal. I thank everyone for, for manifesting consciousness so that there may be communication and that there may be a predicate for divine awareness. Wow, that was really powerful. 
Thank you. A compliment. I think everyone did a fantastic job. I benefited from everything that I heard, although I didn't come in at the beginning. I certainly, I'm sure I benefited. And I hate to, I hate to brag, but my, my Dharma name, when they gave, when I became a Buddhist, they gave me the name Nawan Shirab, which is uh, Sanskrit, Sanskrit for wise speech. So if you want, there you go. That's and, perfect. Yeah, interestingly enough. So thank anyhow, you. thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tom. That was awesome. Bless you. Um, let's go to Carl. Aim and intention. Hi, Carl. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Um, my intention is to embrace my path with courage in this year. Wow. Who knows where it didn't lead me, but I want to embrace with courage. My power statement is... Um, is a difficult one, but I think just I am. I know it's something you say, but I think recognizing the divinity that flows through all of us. So I want to recognize that as my power statement. And my gratitude, I'm grateful for the invite and for being able to participate today. I just felt so much love from everybody, even, you know, unspoken, a great sense of community. And, and my compliment would be to, to Tom for the depth of his insight into his topic. It was very informative and insightful. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Okay, um, Anna. Okay, first is intention. Intention. My intention is to, to connect to all of the people who are waiting to connect with me. A power statement. This one is hard for me today, but I'm going to go with what I what popped in my head before. I can. Wow. Gratitude. I am grateful. I'm always grateful to all of you. I mean, that's kind of like goes without saying, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I am grateful to all of you. And, but I'm also grateful to myself for consistently showing up. That's so beautiful. And a compliment. I want to compliment you, Alexis, for always showing up, for always, for, for organizing this and keeping it up, you know, every two weeks and for all the work you do to, to you know, gather people and find them and organize it it's, and, and to host it. And you do a great job. It's really humbling. You're very it's loving. Much container for us and it's Thank very appreciate that thank you anna and bonnie a oh, okay. an intention <clears throat> okay mine's a little bit different but this morning my favorite tree in the backyard split in half and it very disappointing to look at it with the ice on the limbs and it's on the ground so as you're all speaking, I saw my tree. So my intention is to not see it fallen, but to see the little purple flower that blooms because it fell. Wow. To look, to look for the things that are underneath the fallen. Whoa. And what, what are the other questions? Power, a power statement. That's my power statement. I love that. I'll look for the small things, yeah. Gratitude. Oh, goodness. I'm great. I, like Anna, I'm grateful for all of you. It's And I was nervous about today, too, before, not because of Tom, but because it was 
it was just a day. And so I was a little nervous about everything coming together. So I related to what you were saying. I knew that. And so the power statement and the gratitude is no matter what I thought, it came together. Wow. And it's, I, it's not I, about me. Go ahead. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you. A compliment. Oh, it's a compliment to be with people who can see the purple flower. <laughs> That's so gorgeous. Okay, let's just visualize the violet flame for a moment and think beneath our feet down to Mother Earth and request her violet flames of transmutation and protection and bring it up as high as we can visualize through our bodies, through our auras and seeing it as a healing vibratory force, transmuting all lower frequencies and seeing it as high as we can into space and then visualizing Mother Earth in its entirety, in the beauty of the cosmos, surrounded by this beautiful, glorious, purifying violet flame. I am the violet flame. And just holding that visualization for a moment, healing, transmuting, uplifting. Thank you everyone for this beautiful session. Um, before we close, I'd just like to ask you about your work, Carl, and invite you um, to the future. Right. Um, so, tell us about you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure where to start. Um, well, I trained as a chemical engineer. I worked in engineering and then in information technology. So, and I'm a Virgo. So. I've got a mind that's very defined by logic and precision and thinking, but I'm also very drawn to the spiritual. So I have this kind of internal pulling and tugging all the time. Um, and I've trained as a Reiki healer, a Reiki master, um, but my path led me to becoming a trance medium. So. I work with my particular guide and I can channel other beings depending on the nature of the work. Um, and that's, I suppose, my main calling because it wasn't something I chose or thought about doing. I was tapped on the shoulder by spirit. Um, I trained in London um, at the College of Psychic Studies. I've done some public demonstrations. Um, I've done some one-to-one -one work at the college for a number of years. Um, and now I'm in Spain. Um, and I'm, that's where embracing my path going forward. Um, I'm willing to see how it unfolds for me here um, in a different environment with, I guess, different challenges and different opportunities. But yes, my primary work is um, as a trance medium and in that area i often do trance healing where in trance my guides will do healing extractions spirit release soul rescue um i particularly enjoy doing soul rescue in a group that was like we were in a physical group almost like a small circle where um as the medium i would allow i would be the means by which the group could communicate with those trapped souls and help them release the the pain or the memories or the trauma that would enable them to recognize their state and reach out to spiritual helpers to take them onward into the light could i ask you please to um put your email in the chat for anybody that wants to get in touch with you. Sure, yeah. Thank you. Um, and would it be okay to add you to the future uh, Sacred Segments mail out email? Yeah. Yeah? I mean, you can say no, and I'm okay with that. I won't be offended. No, I might say no afterwards, and I've decided it's all too much. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> you can let me know. 
Um, so, but if this, yeah, this is, um, no, I'd love to. Thank you. So okay. this is my um, spirit voice at yahoo.com. That's a wonderful email. Okay. I know. That's great. Yeah, okay. I just think of which one would be good. <laughs> okay. We didn't have a, a Facebook page, but um, I just <clears> found I'm, 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 it, I'm more an introvert and it's really difficult to think of something to put on a Facebook page every day to keep like feeding your audience. So, well, if you would like to come on to the next sacred segment and do a 10 minute segment, um, then I would love to, you know, if it's not the next one, then in the future, then, you know, please bear that in mind and I will email you on, um, a few days before. Yeah. Um, and so I want would, Sorry, that no, be, no. would that be a demonstration of trance? So for my guy to come through and talk to you all, it, it could be that if that's what you would like. Yeah, yeah it's easy. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, let it be so. Um, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Carl. I want to just say on the next sacred segment in two weeks, the um, uh, the main guest will be. A, a man called Bo Nielsen, who is from Denmark, that lives in San Diego. And it's the power of sound and spoken word. Um, that's the focus. He's a coach and um, spiritual guidance person. I can't remember the actual title, but sound is the, is the focus. Um, so bear that in mind and thank you all for your beautiful participation. Hello, Kitty, that's just joined us. Yeah. As we hold everyone in love um, and good wishes, I just want to say thank you for your participation this evening and I very much hope to see you all again. Sending lots of love and light, happy and bolic, and thank you. <laughs> thank you for, for you. your presence and see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Much thank love. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.